Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use triggers to do things in Unity. So a trigger is a really really good way of, for example, commanding the game to do something once you get to a certain point or whether you want something to occur. So best way of doing this I've always found is to replicate and use a cube as the actual trigger itself. And what I mean by that is we can use the cube as an area as the trigger. So if we go to game object, 3D object and cube, we can use this cube as the actual trigger to do things. So I'm going to expand this cube along here so we can walk into it. So let's have this as, let's say, 10, put it down towards the ground and we'll also tick is trigger and we'll also untick mesh renderer. And you can see now the mesh is gone. This won't appear in the game. So the scene that I'm in is just a quick city scene that I've got from the asset store. It's pretty nice. And we'll be able to walk through here and let's start by getting a game object to appear. So let's create a C-sharp script. Let's call this trigger object script. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. And the only real thing we're going to need here is the object that we're going to make appear. So whether it's object or whether it's music or whether it's just anything in general, that's always the variable you're going to reference. So we can get rid of void start, void update, we don't need them. Public game object. And let's just call this add board because we're going to make an advertising board appear when we go into the trigger. And to do this, we go void on trigger enter, open close bracket doesn't really need to be private if you don't want it to be and what we'll do is we will put add board dot set active and in brackets um, true semicolon and save so the object as I say that we're going to be doing this with is this one right here it's just named object and all it is just a little advertising board that came with the asset pack so if we now go to our cube here, which will be trigger, so let's F2, trigger, and let's drag and drop that trigger object script onto there, and then just declare the variable over here in your inspector panel. Drag and drop. Simple. So now when we press play and have our character walk through that trigger, the advertising board will appear right in front of us. Excellent. So it's not just objects that you can have that working with. Let's try this with a sound. So on my FPS controller, I have a sound object, which I'm going to put this bell on there. And this is quite useful. It's just a simple ding. So let's untick play on awake. And back in our script, what we can do is redeclare this variable. So in fact, let's have a new one because let's mix this up a little. So public audio source. If I spell it right, audio source, the bell, semicolon. So let's change that to the bell dot play, up close bracket, semicolon, and save. And now we just have to declare that. So on our trigger right here, we just drag and drop sound object onto there. So now when we go into this trigger here, the game will make the bell sound. Ready? And here we go. Perfect. So that's how you can use a trigger to do that. Now let's try something else. Let's make some text appear on screen when we go through it. So I have this text object right here. Let's just make this say ding uh, add board is here. I'm going to have it in the center of the screen. Uh, I should probably actually double check what this looks like. So let's have this uh, white text. Yeah, you know what to do. That'll do so we'll be able to see it. And let's zoom in on our trigger once again. And let's change this. Let's have another variable. So public and game object the text semicolon. And now let's have the text dot set active true semicolon and save so let's turn off that uh, ui object again and then let's set it to the trigger itself 
over here. Perfect. And press play. Now when we go through it, the text will appear on screen. There we go. Now what we'll do is let's try one more thing. Let's get rid of the text in here. So I'm going to copy that text, or rather cut that text. So now it's just completely blank. But let's set that UI object as active. So it's on screen all the time, but there's no text. So you won't actually see anything as it stands. So what we could do is when we go into the trigger, let's change what that text says. To do that, we're going to have to add in a namespace because we're using uh, a text element here in the components. So we need to put using unity engine dot UI semicolon. And what we'll do here is the text dot get component in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and then we have our text there semicolon and save so you can see the process of what's happening here and how you can manipulate that trigger script to do whatever you want to get it to do things in unity so now that ui object is always active but as soon as we step into the trigger that's what the text becomes so let's try one more thing i know i said i was going to try one more thing but let's try one extra little thing here let's have all of these things happen at once so when we step into that trigger, let's have the text appear. Let's have the bell go off. So the bell dot play. And then let's have the add board appear. So add board dot set active true semicolon and save. And head back into Unity. And let's see what this looks like. So as soon as we step into it, we should see the add board, hear the ding and see the text. Excellent. Now, in fact, do you know what? I'm going to do one more thing because I know I'm going to get a couple of comments on it. The inverse of all of this is just void on trigger exit. So let's quickly try that out. On trigger exit. There we go. That doesn't really need to be private, so that's fine. So let's do the inverse of all of this. Let's make the text.get component text of oh, because bracket dot text equals nothing so it goes back to nothing we don't really need uh, to worry about the bell but i guess we could stop the bell if we wanted to i'm not going to but you could if you wanted to and then add board dot set active false semicolon and save so now this works as a two-way trigger it works as entering and exiting so when we enter we get what we've already seen and when we exit everything disappears so one more time there we go perfect so that is how you can use triggers to do almost anything you would like unity to do quite simply i mean you could even get the lights to change it's all about controlling the components via the trigger so guys i hope you learned something and if you want to know any more please leave a comment below and I will try my best to get back to you. So thank you very much for watching.